Good day, everyone, and welcome to the Magi Show. Right, as you might have noticed, I uh, got a little bit of uh, medieval times clothes on today because uh, we have a guest joining us from the show Vikings. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the show before, so um, I guess before I introduce uh, the guest, I'm just going to uh, get everything ready for the show here. Just going to update the chat, get the, the latest comments in here. And then I'll share it with a few people, and then I'll give Peter a call. Yeah, and Pete's, Peter's going to be joining us all the way from Ireland, so hoping that the, the connection goes smoothly. Uh, we're going to be using Facebook for this one, so hoping that works out uh, just as good as Skype, or maybe even better. Okay, so looks like we got the chat going. If anyone's able to type a message in there, see if it's working. I'll type one here. All right, let's test that out. Yeah, chat's all set. Cool. All right, next thing I'll do is just share it with a few groups. Yeah, and if anyone else watching the show wants to help share this, it'll uh, speed up the process for the show getting started. I just got to share it with uh, the group that I do some writing with called the uh, Adept Initiates. So I'll share it with them first. Alright, so that's shared to Adept Initiates. Yeah, let's see who else I need to share it with. Share it on my own page. Yeah, I hope everyone's having a good week. It's like a couple days ago I had another guest on the show and we talked a lot about my ancient mystery stuff up north and a lot of other different places like Sudbury, Meteor Impact Craters, Magnetic Anomalies. It was a really wild show so I hope everyone jumps into the archive and checks that one out. Yeah, and if you can't find the, the archive here on Facebook you can also jump into the one on, uh, what's that called? Oh yeah, on YouTube, and you can see that there too. Alright, All right, sorry for the delay folks, just uh, two more groups here to share it with. Yeah, and Pete was ac or Peter was actually just on his way back from somewhere, so I'll give him a couple extra minutes to get ready too. Can't remember where I shared it to, so I'll do one more here. Yeah, I really appreciate everyone helping share the show last time. It's like, man, starting to reach a lot more people than it used to. So you guys are really definitely making a big difference. So keep up the, the good work. Oh, yeah, I'm going to share it with my friend's group in Montreal, too. It's called The, the Conspiracy Talk. They, do a, they used to do a show live out of Montreal called MNR TV. Yeah, and Robert just had his birthday re recently, so if anyone wants to jump into his archive and wish him a happy birthday, I'm sure uh, he'll appreciate it. Alright, so just one last group I'm going to share it with here. I know I keep saying that. <laughs> just when I think I've got them all, I remember one more that I was supposed to do. Yeah, and this group's called Infinite Knowledge and Wisdom. If anyone wants to go check out that one, it's got some really cool content. Alright, I think I'm all set for sharing the show, so now I'm just going to read Peter's introduction and then we'll try to get a hold of him on Facebook here. Yeah, how's my volume looking? Yeah, that looks good. All right, let's see Peter's introduction. All right, so yeah, before I read the introduction, uh, yeah, me and Peter are going to be talking on the show about Vikings, uh, Stonehenge, High Brazil is one of his favorite subjects, I think, and the ancient Irish, too. So a lot of interesting material to cover on the show today. I uh, hope Pete or Peter is able to join us for uh, enough time to, to cover everything, but 
Well, we'll see what we get to. All right, now I'll just bring up his folder so I can read the introduction here. All right, all set. Peter is an actor who worked many years in the industry. His projects include the, the murder of John Long, um, also Man About Dog, and he did a character known informally as The Watcher in the film. Uh, he is currently involved in a long-term typecast contract for a show I'm sure everyone's heard of, The Vikings. And you know, that's an ongoing series created by Michael Hurst, or Hurst. And currently the series has been nominated for multiple Emmy Awards. Yeah, and all my fr friends and family are always talking about the show Vikings. So, yeah, I'm sure everyone's heard of it before. All right, so yeah, that's pretty much all I got for Peter's introduction here. So I'll try getting hold of him next. Let's see. Yeah, we were going to set it up on Skype, but we figured maybe a video call on Facebook would be better. All right, let's try to call him Peter. <clears throat> Hopefully my headphones are working right. Oh, there we go. I can hear him now. Hello, I'm the, uh, I'm just literally getting set up here. Oh, okay. And I'll be about another five minutes, right? Two minutes at the most, all right? Yeah, sure, no problem. No All right, just a literally in the door. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no big no deal. Problems. If All you right. want to hit no mute problem. on your microphone, because we can still hear you right now. Okay. Yeah, and then whenever you're ready, just hit on mute and we'll start. All right, so I was able to reach Peter. He's just uh, getting ready for the show. He literally just stepped in the door, so... <laughs> Well, it's going to be a little bit warm wearing this costume for today. Something I dug out because I usually dress up as an assassin for Halloween, so I figured it would be cool to wear it for the show today. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can get this window here. Oh, hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Uh, looks like the, the Facebook chat's going to put everyone's name as anonymous, so I'll have to jump back and forth in order to see who it is that's messaging, but shouldn't be too much of an issue. Yeah, and if anyone has any questions for Peter as we do the show today, just feel free to type them in the chat there and I'll, I'll try to get to all of them. Alright, looks like Peter's almost ready to join us. Yeah, I think one of these days I'm going to have to do a blog or write a blog for Adept Initiates about Vikings because, man, it seems like a really popular topic these days. Alright, looks like Peter's almost ready. Yeah, I highly recommend Hello. everyone checking out uh, Peter's Facebook page, too. He's always oh, sharing yeah. new videos with some pretty awesome different shows from all over the internet. Uh, he was on a friend of mine's show, Derek Leslie's, and uh, it was a pretty wild interview. They covered some pretty awesome topics, and yeah, big uh, thanks to, to Derek for helping uh, put, put me in touch with uh, Peter here. And it's a privilege to talk to you. Oh, hey, Peter. Live on. Welcome yeah. to the Magi Show. <laughs> uh, it's an honor. Great. Yeah, I'm glad you made it back. I guess you were just out on the road, eh? <laughs> I was. I was playing, like, literally, like, I play, I, I play Irish classical music. Oh, really? On a Thursday night. And it's 
very interesting say what we're actually creating now you know it's what we create within the universe and that is commonly known do you know no i don't think i've ever heard that kind of music before irish strad music okay cool uh, you, you know uh folks um, just heard of the pokes. yeah here, just one second. I'm just going to try adjusting the volume a bit because you're coming in a little bit quiet. So I'll try boosting it here. Okay. Okay. Sound manager. Ah, there we are. Microphone. Perfect. There, I got it all set now. A bit closer. Cool. All right, so a lot of my viewers have uh, heard of your work before on uh, Vikings. Okay. Yeah, I haven't actually seen the Viking show before, but um, my friends and family are, are really big fans of it, and so I was just uh, hoping to ask you, like, uh, how did you get started doing in, working in Vikings? I guess that was because you're a, an actor. I am I, like I'm a basically I, I'm a typecast typecast actor. Cool. It's commonly known as an extra. Yeah. It's commonly known, like it's uh, in in Ireland. It's 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 a type. An extra is a typecast actor, and like it's within the scenes. When they know what you can do in front of the camera, they'll put you in front of the camera constantly. Nice. That's what a featured that, that's what a featured extra is. When you're featured a lot, it's known as a typecast actor. So it's basically an extra, but gets a lot of screen time. Nice. Do you know, so. That's cool. No. Yeah, I actually got a couple pictures from your Facebook page uh, from when you were working yeah, on Vikings. So, do you mind if I show yeah. a couple of those pictures? Or yeah, can indeed. Like I, as, as, like I, it's my photograph. They can't do me for copyright infringement. Thank God. Yeah. I'm saying that. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to make sure that I'm not getting you into any trouble over that. <laughs> oh, no, you won't get me into any trouble. Okay, cool. You know, we, 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 like, the world manifests what they want, you know, and I, I, I'm a big believer in that, and that's what the Vikings were big believers in, because, like, all the Vikings wanted in the world was peace and harmony, and the only way they could actually do that is leave Scandinavia to look for more land, and they had to go to war. They had no choice, because people didn't understand them. Yeah. You know? So, like, every language has... Every lang every language has uh, a different a different view, do you know. Yeah. So like, all they wanted, all they wanted was peace in the world. That's all they wanted, and it it didn't re it didn't happen it didn't happen like that within the within, within through all history. So now it's time to it, my belief is now now time to change because like. When, all, when the Vikings actually raided the world, all, like all they want, they, all they spreaded love in in Gorse, they spreaded love, and the Saxons go, oh yeah, yeah, that's not the real love or whatever. Yeah. Let's go to war. It really happened, Do you know. So, and that's what the that's what the TV series The Vikings is actually based on. Oh, Do you know. Okay. So, like when when at when Ragnar Lothbrok met uh, Ali Stan in England, he started to, he, he started to see his side of love. Do you know? Okay. One one there's only one malevolent being, and his name was Jesus, and Thor was Jesus, and it's kind of thing like all like like they all have different myths within different names, but he was all one. He was the same person. Do you know? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's like. Yeah, it was the same person, and it's like saying, like the legends of High Brazil, like Lishkin and and all, uh, Finn McCool, and they are all the Lebanon gods, but they are all they are all they are all the same. They are all they are all created in in the in the eyes of God. Do you know? Yeah. No, I've so, been look, I've been actually checking into that a little bit because. Uh, when I was growing up as a kid, I always heard about the, the Roman Catholic Church, but I never knew that the, the Irish had their own church as well, and they were sort of at odds with the Roman version. So I was kind of surprised to hear that, and why we never really taught about that in school, right? <laughs> it, 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 like that, like, when you look back to the Irish history books, like they built, like uh, where I grew up in Kildare, it's known as Kildara, okay. right? Uh, 
commonly known Kildare is in I. In Irish, it's Kildare. In English, it's Kildare. And what that actually means is the Church of the Oak. Oh. You know? And they built, like the pagans built churches for, for like, their meeting halls, to, for the people to come and speak their views, you know? Yeah. And that was it. And, you know, and, like, that's what more, that's where, like, that's where the, most of the philosophy came from. Like yeah. when you look back, when you actually look back at the one of the first chapters in the Bible where Jesus walked into the mosque and said, uh, "God does not want money being gathered in the house of God." Yeah. All religions done that. Exactly. The only religions that never done, all religion the only religions that never done that was paganism because oh, no they kidding. didn't believe in that. They didn't believe in that. They believed in they, they, what they believed. What they actually believed in was the likes of uh, Gaia, uh, Austin, and, and the likes of Fehu, and all of that. And when you actually look back through the history books, Fehu was barter. When when you when when you when you have Fehu within your heart, you have God within your heart. And um, when you ask Fehu. For guidance and Gaia for guidance, everything follows. Yeah. You know, and God, God understood that because Gaia, Gaia is the Gaia is the, the mother of all creation. God created the universe in every myth, in every legend. If you if, like myths, legends, God created all of them. Yeah, exactly. You know? God created all of them, and like, like. And it, like it's like in the old book, in the old books of uh, Irish mythology, it it literally says the chariot, the chariots across the sky within within the beam of lights, the, the Mephilim giants have seen these lights, open your eyes and see, can a blind man see, you know? And yeah. that's, you know, and that, that that actually opened my eyes for years. Actually, watching, being in the TV series uh, the Vikings, and actually listening to the stories, you know. Yeah, it kind of it, it it all it all goes back onto the same thing, Do you know. It actually does go all back onto the it, the same thing, like the likes of um, Atlantis and all of these countries. Do you yeah. know. No, I actually like got some. Not, not, I was just going to yeah. say, I got some slides ready today about High Brazil and about Atlantis too. So hopefully we'll get into mm -hmm. that. No, I just got yeah. a viewer too who is asking, uh, "What part of Ireland are you from?" Or are you at? What part of Ireland am I from? I'm from County Kildare. Uh, it's. I presume everybody heard of the Curra, the Curra of Kildare. No, it's one I of haven't the biggest actually. Fields. It's one of it's it's one of the biggest fields in the, in the world. Oh really? Uh, to have a to have a, <coughs> a, race, a race course on a they to do horsing on it, and it's the like the the legend, throughout my legends, the legend the, there's a legend in Ireland, and it's not basically a legend; it's actually fact. Yeah. Saint Bridget, Saint Bridget went to the High King, to the High King of Ireland, uh, Finn McCool and Ushton and and all of them. She went to them, and she goes, "I I I'm at, I want a bit of land, uh, lords," and they, go, they laughed at her, and she oh. like, she literally looked. She looked at them, and she goes, "If I could spread my cloak over the curve of Clare, over, over the church, over the oak, can I reclaim that land as my own?" And sitting on their pedestals on the, on the mountain, and they go, "Yeah, right, that's not possible." They could literally see everything. The, yeah. the, the Mephilim giants, they could literally see everything, and they go, "You may laugh." The same brother said, "You may laugh at me." I, I'm a pagan goddess, and I believe in what I believe. I'll go to the Kura, and I will spread my cloak. Okay. And they go, that's not possible. 3,000 acres she wanted. And she literally went out, and she spread her cloak. All she went with, <laughs> she whistled at every sheep in the whole county covered the Kura. Wow. And they're still there today. And that's, that's what the legend came from. Because all she like, she was a she, like, she grew up a peasant. She grew up a peasant sheep farmer. Her yeah. parents were peasant sheep farmers, 
and that's where the legend actually came from because and when you actually look through it's not actually a legend because like all through the history books within Ireland it always brings up a, a era and St. Bridget do you know? Yeah. and it's kind of thing like the St. Bridget festival was originally a pagan festival and uh -huh. then the Catholic Church took it over and then twisted it yeah. do you know? because like if if a family have over three billion sheep, you like back like back then you had to claim them. She didn't want to claim her sheep. Oh. All she wanted was land. All she wanted was land for her family. All she wanted was land, and the, the kings wouldn't give it to her. And she goes, "Hang on, I have an idea." And she done it. Do you know what? thought she was mad, spreading this red cloak on the ground, and okay. all of a sudden these sheep occur. It was like it was like seeing. It was like seeing snow falling from the sky. Yeah. You know? All of a sudden this field is covered. The whole oh. of County Clare is covered it was covered in sheep. And Wow. That's you know, and, and if you knock down a sheep in in, in the Curry in Clare, it's a three thousand pound fine because the the sheep have more rights to the curry than humans. And oh. that as, as it should be. Yeah, as it no should kidding. be. That, that, that was one of that was one of um that was one of St. Bridget's, uh, when she said that, the sheep, the, peop, the people of Ir the people of Ireland of Era owned the Curra. No government, no land, or no high king will own this land, it's the people. Yeah. And the, the sheep, they own the land. And she went, Eshte. Do you know, and it's kind of thing like, do you know? So, yeah, it'd be nice if we could go back to those ways someday, right? <laughs> Well, it's near. Uh, it, it, it's nearly happening yeah. because all they want, all they wanted to do, is like when you actually think about war, when when people actually shout, uh, "Peace!" That's creating war. Do you yeah. know, that is actually creating war when you shout peace. When you when you shout love, you're creating love. Because I was standing at the bus stop, literally waiting on my bus to come. To, to like to come back to like my girlfriend's house after work or whatever. Yeah. And this beautiful lady approached me, a South African woman. Nice. She approached me. She approached me and she goes, um, Nasta. And I go, Yeah, I believe in God. God's within you. And she goes, Yeah. And she goes, so you go to Mass? I go, No, I don't need to go to Mass because I, I understand. And she goes, I've never heard that before. I said, oh. You believe in love, don't you? You believe in love? She goes, yeah, I believe in love. And they go, there you go. You know, you're talking to me now. So it's kind of thing like, love is love is everything. And that's yeah. all St. Peter wanted. And that's all Jesus wanted was to spread the word of love. And people are starting to realize this. Do you know? No, I believe in the power of words too. It's like if you talk about yeah. stuff, it ends up bringing a, like sort of like a manifestation into the world, right? So if you're talking about war, you're yeah. going to be bringing in war. And if you're talking about love, yeah. then you'll be creating yeah. love, right? Yeah, you're creating it. You yeah. know? And it's a cool way to look that's at the it. Problem. Yeah, it's one way to look at it. Yeah. Because it's the, mo like it's the, the most important thing is like in the, la in the last four years alone, I've noticed and that many people actually going live and talking about love, bringing out the old ways and third cards. Jesus read third cards. And like you don't hear that in the Catholic Church. No, they because took that part out. <laughs> they took that part out because <laughs> but it, it's benevolent. You know, if you understand that word, benevolent means it's not the, it's not within the eyes of God. Yeah. You know? And that's the problem, like that's the that's the problem with all religions, because like they all they what like they they just see one thing, they just see one thing, and then they just block they they block it out and create war with it, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like that's that's what I was actually brought up is because I, I, like I'm proud to be dyslexic. Like, yeah, I was always told when I was a child, even by my teachers, if God wanted you to read and write, my son. He put a Bible in your hand, and I go, "Hang on, yeah, okay." Do you know? And then yeah. when someone handed me, when someone handed me the Book of Enoch on tape, then I started, then I started to understand. Then I got the Bible, then I started to understand. 
a lot of people actually haven't read the Bible. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and that's the problem. And they're they're li they're literally sitting down and they're quoting it. Do you know? So what's like if you don't understand something, there's no point in quoting it. Like you know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. The first thing Jesus ever said is love each other. Do you know? Yeah. And he went like he went up to a blind man, and he said, "If you if if you can see." And he goes, I can't, Lord. He goes, stand up and you will see. The blind man couldn't see, but he actually, he, he, he could, he goes, feel your senses, my friend. Do you know? Feel huh. your senses and you will see. Yeah. That's where, that, that's where it comes from. And like, it's kind of thing, he's still blind, but he can actually feel his surroundings. Do you uh -huh. know? He can actually feel his surroundings because like, every night, every Thursday night, like for the last two weeks, like I'm actually, like I close my eyes when I'm when I'm playing music, do you know? Yeah. And it, it's the music flows with it within yourself, do you know? Yeah. If you close your eyes, you can visualize it better with your like you your soul. You can visualize it better. Yeah. You can visualize it better. And there's a blind guy for the last three weeks in the pub, and like people have turned around to him like and said, "All right, he's not blind, do you know?" But he's he can't see. He can play the whistle. He has a beautiful voice, and it's kind of thing like like you say like last night. The barman goes, "There's your pint," and he goes, "All right, it's four taps up." And he walked across and picked up the pint, walked around, swung around, and sat back down in the seat. Wow! Do you know, and a lot a lot of people say, "Yeah, they can hear," like they can hear, but they can't see. But they know their surroundings. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you know. He can literally go out into the smoking area on his own within a week, and he knows exactly where he's going. Nice, you know. And that is that, like that's that's love and benevolence. You know what I mean? It's kind of it's what you create. You know? Yeah. Like, you know, a blind uh, like a lot of people say, "Oh, a blind man can't see." You. Yes, he can. He can feel your aura. You know? Yeah, it's true. No, even with martial arts, like, you get that a little bit too, because like some people say that you don't even really need to see your opponent; you can just feel them, right? Same thing, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it is the same thing. Like karate, <laughs> karate means the palm of my hand. Do you know? Yeah. And that, that's where karate came from—the palm. Do oh you know? yeah. It's, it's like saying protect. Do you know? Palm yeah. is protect. So. No, that's really wild. No, one of the other slides I got ready for the show today was uh, about High Brazil. And I've, I've okay. got a p picture on screen basically showing that High Brazil was like a, an island off the coast of uh, Ireland. And it's that it a, dis yeah, it's a yeah, and then uh, I guess the, the myth or the legend or the history, however you want to call it, was uh, it would disappear and then reappear every seven years, I believe. Or did you uh, want to tell uh, us about uh, that? Like... In, in our in our mythology, it's known as Tiernan Og. Okay. If you look back, through, if you look back through all the Irish history, it was always commonly known as Tiernan Og, the land of the free, oh. the island of the free. It was the island of the free, and like it, it, it's like Og come, Og is known as Tishta, the land. Yeah. And that's where the like in in our history, that's where the beloved gods lived. That was oh. our. That was that 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 was our legend. What? You know? Like, like a, there's a lot of legends out there saying, "Oh yeah, big rabbits live on the bleeding island, and uh, a king lives on the island, and he's an evil king, and, and all of this." Okay. You know, stories get bro stories actually get broken over the years. Okay. You know? Yeah. When I mean, you actually when you actually grow up with the legend of Tiernan Og, or the fictional truth of Tiernan Og. It actually starts to make sense. The island is there, but it, it appears when the when the island is there. But when when the when the land when the water masses drop every seven years, the island the island is seen. Oh. There's nothing there. There's nothing there today. I've seen the island. It's like it's covered in the mist of fog. It's covered in the mist of fog because yeah. like the only reason it's covered in the mist of fog is because is the the land mass has dropped around Ireland at that particular time with all the floods or whatever every seven years. Obviously, the earth has to rechange the, the value of uh, the continents and sea. 
and the island appears, but the only thing that's actually on it is the actual whole, the, the, the actual tower of the of the original kings. It's actually there, but it's just an old, it's just an old ruin. You wow. Know? No, I and was. I tried to get some old maps together off of uh, Wikipedia to see where they put uh, High Brazil, and mm. it's pretty commonly like just right off the coast there. Eh? It's it's it, high Brazil is common, like Tiranog High Brazil is commonly it's off the coast of Galway, between Galway and Donegal. It's oh. in between. It's in between that. It's in between that. Yeah, it's you know, it, it, Yeah, it's in between that side, and it's like and over legend, like it's supposed to move in between the island. And go across in between Britain, and come across the other side, and go again. Do you know? Wow. So, and that's like we're all uh, we're all the feasers, and I can't actually remember their their names who actually said they were on the land. But it's amazing, like they were when they were actually on that land, because there was nothing there. They couldn't have been on that land because it's there's nothing there. It's just an island that's yeah. actually in the sea, and it just rises. You know. Yeah, so the, that actually makes me think. Do you know, like I actually stood on it, and it's just nothing. Do you know what I mean? Wow. It's just, it, it's just rocks. It's just rocks. I was born in between them, and it's kind of thing like it, they're just rocks. It's the the island is underneath. Yeah. You know, and every seven years it does rise. Do you know, and it's kind of thing like you can see nothing. All you can see is a mist of fog, and yeah. that's why people want to go. That's why people want to go there, because whatever's in the earth. Is creating this mist, do you know? Yeah. Because it's like saying, eh, "Oh, it's a spaceship," do you know? Like that's what some people say. Huh. <laughs> it's a spaceship that lands every seven years and shows, do you know? Well, so, it kind of reminds yeah. me of uh, you know that old story about Planet X or Nibiru that people talk about. How there's like a yeah. planet that might come by the Earth every so often and it disappears and then it comes back again. It almost yeah. reminded me a little bit about that, but I don't know. I yeah. guess it'd be water and not just disappearing, right? Exactly. And that's kind of like that would actually make you think because you look at Atlantis. Yeah. Atlantis had the same myth. The land of the gold. Yeah. The yeah. was known as the land of the gold because like, the, like you look at the legend of Finn McCool okay. and, Brian, and Brian Baru and all the high kings, the the, Mele the Mephilin, as they were commonly known. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, his son, Bjorn, uh, turned around to his father and said, Father, I have to I have to go and look at the land of Ireland, the land of Ireland, right? Yeah. And he goes, okay, my son. He went off, he, like, literally, he, he went on his travels around Ireland, and he got to the edge of Donegal, and Waterford, and Wicklow, and all of that, and he goes, "Oh, beautiful! Like, it's a beautiful country." Yeah. Then he kept traveling on. He kept traveling on uh, the horse Tira. He kept traveling, and he got to the coast of Galway, and all of a sudden, he seen this island in the mist of fog. Yeah, and this this beautiful horse came out of the war with a beautiful queen called Liston. Came across and goes, "Come with me, Bjorn. I'll show you life." And he, he, he talked about it and he goes, hang on, you came from there and you travelled across the water. She goes, yes, but if you're worried, I, I can part the sea. And he goes, okay. And he, he, did, he thought about it and he goes, yeah, I'll go with you. How long will you be there? You'll be there eight days, do you know? Yeah. And he never, he never, he didn't think about it. And he, he got on the horse, left his horse on the bank, got on got on Tierna, Tierna Og, got on the horse, travelled to this island. Yeah. And he travelled to this island, and what he seen was beautiful friendship, beautiful love, and happiness. Everyone loved everybody. And the whole place was covered in gold, rune stones. Wow. Animals he's never seen before. Animals he's never seen before. And time passes. And he goes, he turns around to Ishta. And he goes, sorry, my love. I have to go. I'm here. 
I'm here, uh, how long am I here? She goes, you're here a hundred years. He goes, hang on, how can I be only here a hundred years? I came here yesterday. He was oh. sleeping as well. And he came, he goes, I came here yesterday. I need to go back and see my family. Yeah. She goes, yes, okay, you can go back. But it's not what you see. And he goes, okay. And he literally, he, he goes, can I go, my love? And she goes, yes, you can. Your, your family will remember you. Like he had 14 kids oh, on wow. this island with this trip. And like it's kind of like he traveled back. On, he traveled back onto the land. He traveled back onto the land. This is like the, like this is going into two myths and two legends at sure. the same time. And he he he, he gone on Tierra Tierra Nog, commonly known nowadays as White Brazil, the horse. Yeah. He got on that. It was a belevenant horse, but what what could travel in any in any distance across the world. He went back to Ireland, and she shouts from the island, Fionn, don't get off the horse. Don't lean onto the land. When you lean onto the land, you will wither and die. Holy. You are not what you see. You're a billion years old now, my son. He was married to this woman, and he, he looked at her and go, yeah, okay, I'm still the same person. And like when you see that, he, he went back, and he never thought about it. He got on the island. And he went back to his father's land within around Kildare. And he went back. Nobody was there. The whole land was changed. The whole land was changed. He was traveling. He, he traveled over uh, the Giant's Causeway all over St. All over St. Patrick's land. Croke Patrick. When he traveled over Croke Patrick, he was coming back across the land. And he seen, he, he seen the priest. He seen... St. Patrick, nice. he seen St. Patrick, and he wondered, he looked at him, and he goes, eh, sorry, Father, eh, what land is this? This is Ireland. Do not come, eh. And he goes, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm home. Yeah. And St. Patrick turned around and goes, you're an Ephelin. And he goes, I am, Father. But you're evil. You're you. You don't spread the word of love. And he goes, I've spread the word of love every day of my life. And he goes, but giants haven't been on this planet for three thousand years. And he looked at him and goes, What do you mean, Father? He goes, Pick up that stone. Uh, can you do me a favor? He literally and he goes, I can, Father. Can you move that stone? Can you move that rock? The rock was this. The rock was literally a mountain. You know, yeah, like a megalith. Rock, like a metal lift. He goes, yeah. can you lift that stone for me? And he goes, I can, Father. But there's only one thing. I can't, I, I, I can't get off the horse. And he goes, no problem. And he never thought anything of it. And he, 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 he leans forward, starts to pick up the, the rock and move it to the, move it to the left to get it out, get it out of the way for St. Patrick. St. Patrick literally went and cut the bridle of the horse. And the horse, the, the horse literally, the, the, the saddle fell, St. Patrick landed on the land. Oh. And he, he died there and then because he, he was told not to touch the land. Yeah. Because he was, he wasn't meant to go back. He was brought, like, because within the battle, when he left, when he left Ireland, that's when the war began. When they went in of eleven, and that's when all the giants were all killed. Yeah. Within the island, you know, that's when they were all killed, and like that's where the that actual legend comes from. Wow. From, because it's like saying Bridget, when she knew the Belepidin, and they were all trying to get rid of these, you know. Yeah. And then Saint Patrick, when he came, he cut the bridle. He didn't have to. Like, like it's kind of thing. Like, oh, we don't want them. Because they're evil, they look horrible. But they might be spreading the word of love, but they're not. Do you know? Yeah. And, it, and it's, that's why Saint, they say Saint Patrick banished the snakes out of Ireland. Yeah. He banished. He he, he banished. He they basically banished the the loved ones. Do you know? Oh. So he basically banished the loved ones. 
Yeah, you know, I've heard a, I, lot, a lot of different theories about what he was banishing. Some people said he was banishing snakes. Some people said it was the Freemasons or the Templars. And then now hmm. we're hearing this. <laughs> like, it makes you think, like, a lot of people, a lot of people, like, a guy puts up a video there on Paddy's Weekend and saying Patrick banished the South Americans. They're, they're known as the Binyaks, the little small uh, South Africans. Back then, they were, they were small, and they traveled. This is why he was trying to say it. They traveled to this island. Okay. St. Patrick and them, as they're known as leprechauns. Oh, yeah, but yeah. Within, within the midst of leprechauns, and leprechauns were the little people. We were the little people. We oh. are the little people appeared to the leprechaun. Oh, and that's yeah. Where the legend, that's, where, that's where the legend came from. Leprechauns do exist. Because like you look at you look at certain lands within Ireland, uh, the likes of um, Car like Carberry Castle in Car Carberry in County in County Mead, certain castles around Ireland. Yeah. You go to them in the summer solstice uh, and sit on the hills w w underneath the castle. You can actually hear fiddles playing when there's no one there. Wow, like a ghost or something, eh? It's like a go. They're like like the the leprechauns and the the, the leprechauns always lived. They always lived under the land. Oh. They were the they they were the the fairy folk. They always look after the people. Yeah. They looked after the, looked after the high kings of Ireland, and they looked after the people. Do you know? Nice. And it's like saying like. When it's like saying when the Americans, not, not I'm nothing against the Americans, I love them all to bits. <laughs> when they when they when they got a, when they got this story, they twisted it. Yeah, it's like everything, you know. It's like everything we we twist we twist stories through history. Yeah, it's like the know? telephone and game. Yeah, it's like the t it's like the telephone game. Yeah, it's yeah. like the new Facebook. People <laughs> people say one thing and they, 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 they don't under, they don't understand it. Like you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, we had a comment from the the viewers here. They were asking about druids. Do you have any information about druids at all? There, the, the the druids the druids were uh, the basically the Irish the, the Irish belief. The, the, what the druids actually believed was uh, peace and harmony and love. That's all they ever. That's all they ever wanted. Yeah, was love to, to follow their land and like. All they wanted was Ireland. The Druids, like they travel all around the world for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Yeah, I believe and, that too. You know, and it's kind of thing like that's all they ever wanted. Like it's with all the high kings, like they were Druids, and Saint Bridget was a Druid, and it's like with every with every god, with every person, like I'm we're like I'm still a Druid today. Yeah, because it's the land you actually. It's the land you stand on. If you stand on England, you're still a Saxon. Do you know? Yeah, it's true. You know, and it's like saying, like Canada, like it's like the Sasquatch or whatever or whatever. The Bigfoot, yeah. Where people want to, to see. They manifested all of that. No, it reminds me of the old saying that the, the First Nations they people have existed. here. They, they must have existed because they're, they're all there, you know? Yeah. Oh, I can hear you. Now I was just going to say the First Nations people got an old saying that uh, what the people believe is true. So I'm a, I'm a big believer in that too. That we can't underestimate the power of belief, right? You can't under you can't underestimate the power of belief. Is because if we if we create love, if we create love on this planet now at this particular time, love will happen. And war will will war won't exist. Yeah, that's all the world wants, you know. And like, like that's all I ever wanted. Look at this. Uh, that's all I want because the most important thing is love. Yeah. You know? No, we so, definitely need more of that in the world these days. That's for sure. We do. We do. Yeah, I just put up a map know? here of uh, the coast of Ireland, and I was looking at the shelf. Okay of the, the ocean, how yeah. it goes by. And it almost looks like the shelf, you can tell where the island would be. It's like, a, yeah. it's not just a myth or a legend, but we can even look at data here from Google Maps that shows where it looks like there is a spot yeah. where there would be an island, right? Yeah, like, 
I have the maps myself on my phone. Like when I Google it, when people are talking about it, yeah. I go, hang on, that's not what I heard. Do you know? Yeah. That's not what I heard. Like I've heard, like I've heard uh, the likes of uh, white lights in the sky, and and all of that. And I, I've seen, I've actually seen white globes in the sky. They're wow. following me. Like a and UFO, like, you mean? I was live in one of my feeds about, three, about a year ago. Wow. Like, getting on the bus and seeing this globe literally follow me and then disappearing and it, and then coming over coming over the area. I mean, you know, that would freak you out. Yeah. And it didn't freak me out. All the, like, the young people literally came up and came to me. Well, what's that? And I go, what do you think it is? They go, it's a spaceship. And they go, do you believe it's a spaceship? <laughs> they go, yeah, we're seeing it, but I go, it's not, it's a white light. What yeah. does that tell you? Yeah, but Peter, you're always talking about love. That, that loves me, so that must love you as well. And the minute they said that, it just disappeared within that light. Do you know, and it was gone. Wow. Do you know, and that, like, that, that does open your eyes. Do you know, we, like, like, all goes back to the same. We create what we need to create. Do you know? Yeah, it's true. To create love. That's all Jesus ever wanted was to create love. Do you know? Well, some days I look back at the teachings of Jesus and I wonder if he was a pagan the whole time, right? Because when they asked him if he was the king of the Jews, he even told the the, the court that, that people believed he was, but it was like he never once said that he was, right? <laughs> he, never, he, he, he never once said it. Yeah. When you look, when you look at the, one of the quotes, in the Bible, when he was preaching, he was preaching the word of his father. It's even in the book of Enoch, it says it. He was preaching the word of his father, yeah. and the pe and the priests of the town brought Mary Magdalene in, and the th th threw her in front of her, and he looked at her, and he walked over, and he goes, "I forgive you." And he stood up and said, Who within ye have sinned? Cast the first stone. Yeah, exactly. Who did? Nobody did. Nobody <laughs> did. Because everybody sins. Yeah. When you're born, you sin. Like, a lot, like I had an argument with people. When a child is born, it sins. Everybody sins. We have to grow up within the sin. Yeah. Do you know? It's part and of that's existence. What, that, that's, basically what, that's basically what he was saying. Do you know? That's yeah. basically what he, what he was saying. Is, like, love is the most important thing. Do you know? Yeah, because, exactly. Like, we all sin. We all sin. And we're sinning today. We're in war. Do you know? It's true. So, it all goes back to the same thing. Vikings, the Saxons, and, every, like, Columbus... Like, like when you go back to saying Columbus was the first person to discover America, <laughs> no, he wasn't. The Vikings, the Vikings are there. Yeah, you know, and that's been proven today. Yeah, you know, I got some and, slides and, like, about that for today's show too, actually. <laughs> yeah, and that actually make that actually make you think. That would actually make you think about history. You yeah. Know? So, now, do you, uh, you know? What do you think about the connection between Stonehenge and the Vikings, or I guess High Brazil too? I guess there was a connection between those. There is a connection, like the, within the w within the legends of Tiernan Og, um, Stonehenge, and the likes of um, the Giants Causeway and all of that. Like they're all, like yeah. like they were built. They were built. They were built by the Benefit. They were built by the Giants as a yeah. meeting place. There are there were their, the churches to their gods. Do you know the likes yeah. of uh, like all of these like. Like the, when you look at when you look at uh, Odin, Odin means Wednesday. Odin in in English it's Wednesday. Do you know? Oh, Odin really? was the, the, the god of Wednesday. Yeah, I never that's heard where it that. comes from. Yeah, that's where it comes from. Odin means Wednesday. Wow. Do you know, Thor Thor means hammer. <laughs> yeah. Do you know? No, so, there's a, a friend. And, uh, now, there's a friend of mine named J.J. Ainsworth, and she was doing some research on uh, the ancient Viking inscription in Denmark, and it's known as the yeah. longest runic inscription of, like, an ancient stone ship site. So I just put a picture from her YouTube channel on the screen, 
And uh, it's it's wild how this Stonehenge sort of has like a, a giant clearing that leads up to the rocks to, I guess, okay. demonstrate how big the Viking ship was. And then they've got some sacred stones aligned at the end. So I was wondering, have you heard about the, the Denmark site at all too, or no? I... I heard a, I heard a little bit I heard a little bit from uh, Gustav Listoff. Yeah. He played like and um, most like most of the cast I like I won't name them out there are fishing names out in uh, out in line. Yeah, cool. Uh like most of the most of the actors who are in that are from Denmark. Oh. And, and like like Alexander I'll, 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 I'll literally say hello Alexander Goodrick. He's from he's from Scandinavia. They're from all of that. They're from that country. Oh, nice! And, like it actually it makes you open your eyes. And he goes, like, their legends, their legends are our legends. Exactly. You know? yeah. Like it's kind of thing. It, it, they're they're all the same. Like it's like the Vikings had the same legends. You know? Yeah. No, I believe that there is like a they connection had, there. The Vikings had the. Uh, the when you look when you look at the legend of the leprechaun, they had the legend of the loof. There, there, there. It was a sprite that lived under the ground. Oh wow! The evil, and that was kind of like you don't hear a lot of that, you know. Exactly. You don't yeah. hear a lot of that because, like, they all they want, like all they wanted was land to travel the world and to spread love, but. The gods didn't want them to do that. They needed land. The only way you could actually go out and get land is go to war. Yeah. And it's still happening today. Do you no, know? That, I think that's like a lot of the problems of the world today is coming to. It's like it is really boiling down to how much land is left. And people are trying to ignore that fact and try to make it into some sort of other issues and stuff. But it really is coming yeah. down to that, right? It is coming down to that because, mm. like, you look like... The only country on the planet, right, what's well, had war since the beginning of time, is Iraq. Yeah. Do you know, Hitler went to Iraq. Every the Romans went to Iraq. Everybody went to Iraq. Yeah. Like, what are they searching for? They're searching. They're searching for the truth of love and happiness. Yeah. That's basically it. You no, know? I think uh, Iraq and Iran and that whole area there by the Mediterranean even, it's pretty much had the same history going on for quite a while now where it's one yeah. people after another conquering and taking it over and over again. Right? It's true. Like, yeah. it's, like, it's kind of like, like, when you look, like when you look through the, back to the history books, it's, uh, like you, it says it in the Bible, when the world understands Love, there'll be no more war. Yeah. Every land on the uh, every land on the earth will have war. I mean, you look back through the history books; it doesn't say nothing about Ireland. No. You know, we've had our wars. Yeah. But we've like every we we've overcome them within love because in the end of the day we fought the war, but they go hang on, they're a stupid race. <laughs> England, <laughs> like that's what they've done. England walked away. They tried to want the land. They wanted the land, but they didn't fucking get it. They got half an hour in Ireland, but they gave the land back to the people, the other part. Yeah. Sure, yeah, fair enough. It's been taken for thousands of years anyway, so off you go. Yeah. You know, and, that, and, and that's what happened, you know, and that's what literally, that's what literally happened because it's like saying, okay, it's happening today. Do you know? Like, it's like when Hitler... This is commonly known. You can look it up. Hitler sent a letter to the De Valera at the time when in the Second World War. Okay. He sent a letter to to the De Valera, and he said, uh, "Don't worry, I won't bomb your land. We don't need a cabbage patch." <laughs> oh, jeez. Do you know what I mean? Because it's just, it, it's a small land. Yeah. Do you know? Jeez. And that's something you else. Know, and that's, that, that is the first thing he actually said in German, in a letter to the, the, the president of Ireland. Oh, we don't need your land because it's only a cabbage patch. Jeez, too much. Eh? You know, and he was bombing England every day of the week. Yeah. Because when you actually think, like, what were they, like, he, all, he, all, like all he was going after was 
the likes of the same legends, the Balepalin, the the Gurians, the Gorans, and all that. Like they they were supposed to go go into the North Pole and go underground. Yeah, and the Hitler whole actually went there. Do you know, and, like the Irish have went there like over the years, and like it's Jeez. kind of thing like there's something there. There's yeah. something there. There's something there. We don't know what's beneath. We don't know what's beneath our feet. Wow. We can send. Well, I won't go into the conspiracy theory of people that haven't been on the moon. <laughs> yeah, I want to like, do a whole show on that. <laughs> we actually don't know what's actually on our own land. What's mm. underneath? True. Our land. We don't know what's on. We don't even actually know what's in the sea. Yeah, we you still know, got a lot of exploring yeah, to do that's here. That's the problem. Like the, the new thousands of years ago, what was underneath the sea? Because, like, they like they've seen it every day of the week. You know, they've seen it because the levels of the sea were lower. You know what the war, what they are today. Yeah, you it's know? true. No, I was. You know, uh, like, I'm. I'm glad you brought up the point about uh, Columbus coming to America first and how it wasn't really the case and it was more likely the Vikings. I was wondering, yeah. have have you heard about the Stonehenge that we have up in uh, northern Canada? I did. I I I heard that through a friend from Canada. Nice. And he's in the process of actually going out there in the next two weeks and going live. Oh no, kidding! There. Yeah, I'm supposed to be yeah, going there actually, in a couple of weeks too. <laughs> he's actually going to do it. You know. Well, that's cool because. Uh, yeah, I brought up that other Stonehenge, the or the ruins in Denmark there, because that design actually happens to match the one that we have here in Canada, how it has that same runway leading yeah. up to rocks that were aligned. So I started doing a little bit of digging in that, and I noticed that uh, like uh, if you look at the world map, Stonehenge is across from the what is it, the Irish Sea, and then you got Dublin on the other side, right? You got Dublin on the other side, yeah. Yeah. So I took a map of a. Uh, our Stonehenge, and it's actually across a lake, and we have a city called Dublin across from it also. So I was like, isn't that kind of neat that you guys have a Stonehenge in a Dublin, and we do too, right? Eh? It is like our like our our Stonehenge would be uh, or it would be like there's in Clare in Clare alone, there's all over County Clare there's there's uh, there's stones within every field. Yeah, they're little, they're little monarchs making a path, and it's they're they're literally going to all the holy. They're they're literally leading to all the holy places what on the planet. Yeah, it seems like volcanic all activity the, in the all ancient the time. And all and yeah. like the, the likes of New, like Newgrange, Newgrange in Ireland, it was uh, built uh, three three billion years ago. Wow, and like. When the summer solstice comes across, the sun hits, goes dark, and you can see, and it points to all the metal lakes around the uh, around the earth. It literally Stonehenge lights up at the exact same time. Yeah, that's what ours does they too. All light up at the exact same time. The passage comes through, and within the legend, it's known as the portal to the gods. Wow! You know, and it's kind of thing like. Okay, what 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 are they trying to tell us? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know. No, I put on, I put on the screen some of our, our largest blocks from our Stonehenge, and they, and they line up with the yeah. equinox too. Like the the sun on the equinox or the solstice goes right over the blocks. So there's so much that the the two sites have in common, and there's actually a legend there too is. that there was giants involved here in North America. So I was wondering if uh, if that giant thing is just a coincidence or. It's amazing how many cultures seem to say the same thing, right? Eh? It, it, it is. like It makes you think, like, when you look through certain legends, you look at the legends of Stonehenge and the Giant's Causeway and all of that, you always hear the name, the likes of uh, Lula, Valinda, and the likes of, uh, like, the wizards coming and... Given, given knowledge. Yeah, to the exactly. World. I like to you call know, them the magic. All the along was here that. Yeah. The legend of uh, the sword and the stone. That, oh, yeah. that that's been transferred from generation to generation. Do you know. Yeah, I really like that one too. 
Okay. You so, know? And it all, it, all, it all translates back to the same thing. Love. Yeah. Because why did they build, why did they build these, uh, all these monoliths around the world that are actually still here today, but they're never corroded. Yeah. But man is built around them and they go, oh no, they mean nothing. Wow. They mean something, do you know? Yeah, exactly. No, it's pretty cool that our, our Stonehenge actually was constructed, I guess, after the Ice Age. Because the Ice Age yeah. happened to push all the rocks away. So these are the only rocks that are there. So it's pretty obvious that they were moved there. And they got these balancing stones that are the shape of pyramids put underneath them to prop them up right on the right angles. And then the, the First Nations people still use it as their holy site today, too. So some, some people and think that they're just natural rocks, but even the scientists agree that there's definitely something to this place. There is. There is something to it. When you actually look, like people have actually tried to to bring them and re recreate that, like w with on wood, like it's not possible. Yeah, or it's really them difficult. From, yeah. from, from, like a um, uh, hundred miles down the sea on stones to try it it's not possible no like, i think how giants did they build, yeah how did, they build a, how did they build a path like to to go to stonehenge and from ireland like to build a path to, to, it all ends up it all ended up it literally all ended up on stonehenge yeah it was the it, it was the path to to the land like to the net to the metal in and to to their like to their go is what they believe the pagans yeah. it all ended, it all ended up back to the same thing you know when Jesus yeah. was there like like when you think about it like they must have believed in some form of Jesus yeah you know well, there's the missing like, years of Jesus not, too right it said it, it says certain quotes I won't quote them but it said uh, uh, when when we're in love within the being you will see. You know, and that that open, that open your eyes. Yeah, exactly. You know? No, it's pretty you know? cool too that uh, our Canadian government came to this uh, Stonehenge site up north, and they did a big survey about it in uh, 1990. Then they got the location of all the blocks to like map it out, but then that publication yeah. was never given, so it was sort of like covered up. And then the, the ministry actually went in there and allowed all the trees to grow in around the Stonehenge so that people couldn't see it. And they took down all the signs, and then they said they did it to stop vandals from destroying it. But I was always wondering, like, there's only not a lot of people up there, so I almost wonder it sounds fishy that they would, like, it hide it. sound like fishy. That, right? You know, like, you look, like, talking about legends, there's a place in China. Yeah. And... It's not. It's not slightly going off the topic, but it's it. it it's known. It's known as the forest of death. And okay. like when everyone goes there, people disappear for no particular reason. And like they're saying, like when you look, like they can find it, the, uh, legends on YouTube and and yeah. on on Google Maps. And like when you actually look through that, when you actually say restarting it now, so that can get it going again not sure how it got shut down but i'll try to look yeah. into that after well, okay it's back up and going now all right um yeah the reason i brought up the cain and abel thing is because uh, next to our stonehenge we actually got a, an offering table and i know that the cain and abel story had to do with offering tables so i was like oh, yeah. that's, that's kind of neat and then uh i was wondering like what's the connection between offering table shapes and a stonehenge and then I happened to notice that the, the Stonehenge that you guys have is the same shape as a, an offering table. Yeah. So I was like, there, maybe there is a connection between those two. There has to be a connection because, like, like why would they build, why would they build tables, sacri like, they're commonly known as sacrifice line, sacrifice yeah. tables. Why would they build tables within every continent in the world where they're the exact same, in the exact same position? Within the bylines, they're all built on the bylines of the of the planet. Yeah. They actually are. They actually are all built on the bylines of the planet. Do you know? Yeah, it makes and that sense. Make you think, do you know? No, and it's weird so, too that uh, 
that lake that we got next to our Stonehenge has the image of like a, a shaman or like a holy man wizard, like carved yeah. right into the shape of the lake. And then that shaman matches one that's from uh, South America. And then we got a legend up here saying that the giants were actually able not to just build Stonehenges, but they were able to shape the lakes themselves too. So I was like, wouldn't it be wild if the the giants not only built that, but also put images in nature, like in the shore of a lake for us to, to find as a clue? <laughs> yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Because like, you look at the, the legend of Brian Baru and Finn McCool, Right, when Brian, like, Brian Baru was a Scottish uh, benevolent king giant. Yeah. And when he raided, when he wanted to, when he wanted to raid, he, he wanted to raid Ireland. And Brian Baru, Finn McCool's parents said, hang on. Do you know? Yeah. Like, to go, okay, we have a pram. We, we, we have a, a pram. We put him onto the giant's causeway. And when... When the king from England came over, the, the Belepelin, yeah, when he came over, he looked over and he goes, to the, he, said, he looked over and goes, Jesus, who's this? This is Fionn. That's your son. Yeah, he's only he's only six months old. And he goes, oh, Jesus, we don't need, we don't need to, we don't need, we don't need to, to take over this land if your babies are that, if your babies are that big. Wow. Do you know? That's, like, Finn McCool just literally decided to get into a pram and say, like, fuck this, you're not raiding our country. <laughs> so, if the Giants are that big, bigger than him, yeah, like, he was the same size, but he was a baby. He was wrapped in a nappy, in a cloth nappy, in a baby clothes, with a suitor in the mouth, Jeez. and the whole lot. And that, like, that's, he goes, whoa, I'm, I'm going back to Scotland. <laughs> I'm going to have to Do read you know? more about these legends from Ireland and Scotland, because... A lot of it I've never heard before, <laughs> and some really cool stuff that relates to all my it's research. Like, yeah, it, it 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 all it like it all ends up back to the same theory: are we alone in the universe? You know, it all ends up back. God came down in the beam of light. Yeah. Mary, Mary, Mary was born in the matter of conception, and it all ends up back to that. Yeah. Love exists. To the same thing, do you know. God wouldn't be, Jesus wouldn't be here if it wasn't for love. Yeah, exactly. You know? No, and it's kind of neat to think that uh, Cain could have been here in America because uh, part of the Bible says that he built a city called Enoch, like the book you mentioned before, and uh, yeah. he, he named his first city after it, and he named the city Enoch. And then it turns out that right. uh, the city that's buried underneath Mexico today. Just happens to be named the same thing, uh, T. Enoch Titlon. And it's weird yeah. be because this uh, city seems to match all the information that we have about Atlantis. So it's like, isn't it weird that Atlantis could be under Mexico City and a lot of people aren't talking about it, right? Yeah. Is, is that, uh, actually, heard, I actually heard that now. It's actually interesting when you actually said that. Yeah, it's because you know? it's uh, a lot of people don't believe it because they're always looking for Atlantis to be underwater. But what they don't realize is the Spanish actually drained all the water that was around this city. It used to be underwater, so it was yeah. like that's why that we don't really associate it with that. Yeah, in this same city too, it would fell out of favor with the gods and was wiped out by a great flood, and then it went through different phases of being repopulated over the ages, and it was known as the most biggest city in the ancient times. Like, it had over 200,000 people living in it. Okay. And then if you put it on the map, across from Gibraltar is exactly where it is. And then it happens to cross over the Bibini Road, too, that Edgar Casey always talked about, right? So it's like, I don't know how many of these things are going to line up to point at Atlantis being underneath Mexico, but sure is a lot of it. And it's... It, Imagine if the Giants maybe, were really maybe, involved. Maybe that's why he wants to build a wall, because they want to hide the truth. Yeah. Do you know? <laughs> yeah, that it's wall not is. Because, it's not only because they want to, oh, to, stop the, the, oh, to stop all the drugs come coming into the world, or stop all <laughs> of this, and stop all of this. Like, it all ends up back to the same thing. What's here? 
Yeah. When you go and research, like certain, like like within Ireland, if you find a, if you find say the likes of a, a, a quartz crystal on on top of your land, okay, on the land, up above the land, you have to claim that. Oh really? You know, if it's above the land, it's yours. But if you go down, say thirty feet. It's it's owned by the land. It's owned by the governments. Yeah, yeah. They call it crown land here. Yeah. They call it yeah the crown the crown win and yeah. It, it's yeah like oh you know what I mean like it's like saying like I was like when we were doing an episode of the Vikings yeah we were in a quarry a quartz quarry and the, all the quartz it's literally all around the place they don't mine it. They mine the topsoil to build roads. Yeah. Do you know? And it's taken out of this country and it's brought to Canada to put on the roads and and it's brought all over the world to, for the topsoil of the roads. And that, that, that makes me think, you know? Now, one of these days, I hope that we can actually start mining space so we don't have to destroy the planet so much to do it. <laughs> Uh, true, yeah. true, true. Hopefully, you know, yeah, you know, like talk, now, talking about space. You look at Richard Branson. Yeah. Right. He was supposed to uh, go up into the atmosphere this year. Yeah, spaceship one. Sudden, yeah, up into the spaceship one. All yeah. of a sudden, it stopped. It. They're they're not doing it now. Oh, they really cancelled it. Eh? Yeah, they really cancelled it. Why did they cancel it? You know. Yeah, that's weird. I mean, he won't go in, he won't go in, like, that's why I want to know. Like, I, pri- I, I priced the ticket, and I'm under a god, man, it's ne- it was nearly four and a half grand. Yeah. Like, I want the right mind to pay four and a half grand to go up into outer space to see <laughs> what's up there. Yeah. I would, but, yeah. like, do you know, maybe he didn't get enough, maybe he, he probably didn't get enough money, do you know? Yeah. So all the rich people, all the rich people are probably being up there already. <laughs> Yeah, the secret space you know, program. They could have already colonized yeah, Mars for all we know. Yeah, secret space program. What are you talking about the secret space program? Corey Wood. I'll mention his name. Yeah. You heard of Corey Wood? Uh, Corey Wood? No, I don't think I have heard of him. Corey Wood. Corey Wood. Uh, you could go into conspiracy. You can go into all of this the space program. Yeah. Corey Wood, Corey Wood was born in England in the in the seventies. Cool. And in the last four year, last four years, he's after coming out and saying he was part of a a space program. Wow. And that had actually that, that like I watch him all the time on YouTube. Yeah. And when you mention his name, the, the likes of. Uh, like the, the the ancient aliens are involved in it uh, within his theories. Yeah. The likes of the, the blue aliens, the blue the the blue aliens were they're they're part of the um what do you call them the the family of nine. Okay. They're part of the family of nine, the protectors of the planet. Oh, sick. And and that's what he was like. That's what he, Corey Wood. He said he was in. He was in. He was in the Antarctic. He was underneath the sea. He's been in all these mythical lands. They've travelled back in time. They've, he's been there, and they showed him. And now it's. He literally says, "It's time for him to come out and tell the truth." Jeez. You know, that's all he ever says. Yeah, I'll check know? his work out. No, usually when it comes to the secret space program, I always listen to Billy Carson's videos. He does a... Yeah, I've listened to good... Billy Carson. Uh, yeah. Corey Wood. Corey Wood is part of Billy Carson. Oh, okay. He was cool. one of the first people... He was one of the first people to approach. Yeah, if anyone know? wants to jump into the archive, I was lucky to get Billy Carson yeah. on the show back in December. <laughs> All right, so yeah. um, I guess uh, we're getting pretty close to time for the show. Um, did you want to summarize okay. for people uh, what kind of projects you got working on? Or I guess you're still doing Vikings, right? Uh, we're, I'm still doing the Vikings, yeah. Wow. I'm, in be, I, I'm in the process of trying to start out something with my government. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> won't go into that detail. <laughs> but, yeah, we're in, we're in uh, the end of season six nice. at the moment. So... And we're, we're officially on a break. Oh, okay, so cool. We're officially on a break, and it's it's all based on 
what actually happened between Ivan the Boneless and like why the way he was. Oh, okay. Uh, within season five and season six. Cool. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of the the fans of your show are going to be happy to hear about that because uh, it's all yeah. bit, it's all you see. It's like saying, it's like saying, uh, what's the worst disability in the world? Ignorance. Yeah, is the worst disability in the world. Ivan the boneless, he couldn't walk. Oh really? He was handicapped, and he couldn't walk, but he could see, and. He learned, he, like within the power of his hands, he learned how to shoot a bow. Sick. And he knew how to. He knew. He knew how to laugh at his aggressors. He go, yeah. "Fuck you!" You know what <laughs> I mean? I have no legs. You can pull me, but I'm st- I'm still loved. But he was one of the biggest tyrants. He killed his own people because he believed in his form of love. Do you know? Yeah. No, I'll have to check that out. Do you know, he believed he believed in his form of love. Do you know? Yeah, that's different. So, huh? It is different, and it's kind of thing like he wouldn't he wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for the the legends. Like Ragnar Lockbrook was his father, but his mother wasn't. Um, his mother was another mother. I, like, if you watch the series, and not going into the names. Yeah. Or. For reasons I can't. Yeah. Oh, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> Copyright. Um, yeah. But you look at you. You look at all of that, like the likes of Ragnar Lockbrook and uh, all the Shield Maidens. You know, you look at all of that. The, uh, like the seer literally turning around to I the the Ragnar and goes, "When you see the blind man, your death will come." He resonated that Ragnar did himself. Jeez. He resonated that himself. And it's like saying, okay, he's seen the blind man looking at him. But he goes, whoa, but your man wasn't blind. Your man literally looked around and he goes, when you see the blind man looking at him, and he goes, oh, I'm going to be dead. Do you know? Wow. That's what, that, even in the history books, it literally says that. Nice. Do you know? No, I'm going to have to check the, out the, the show. Vikings and all and, no, I usually, no, I usually no, don't watch too much TV. No, I usually don't yeah, watch too much TV, but I'm going to make time to watch Vikings now because I'm I, really interested. I in don't it. literally, I don't watch a lot of TV. The only really, the only re- program I really watch, as to say, I watch because I love my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I watch a TV program every night when it's on, and it's called Fair City, and it's an Irish program. She loves it. Nice. But I watch it because she likes it. Yeah. Do you know? And I could be live talking to watching someone on their feed or whatever or doing something, but I literally watch it. I literally know what's going on within the TV series is because I know most of the actors that are in it. And it's so funny watching them because it was actually in it. <laughs> do you know? And yeah, it wild. makes you think. <laughs> do you know? It makes you think because, like... The word, the word, we create what we need to create, to love, yeah. do you know? Like, I don't, I don't watch the news, I hate the news. Yeah, it's too depressing. When you look at the weather, when you look at the weather, the weather is not what we see, do you know? Not yeah. in this day and age. No, do with you know? harp and all that stuff, it makes you wonder. The exactly. Yeah. And, and the word, the word, talking about weather, the world, right, are getting all of this weird snow. It's yeah. not snow. Yeah, like, I guess you, you guys look, got you snow. <laughs> yeah, the world like, everywhere is getting snow. Egypt yeah. has got snow. South Africa has got snow. Australia is expecting snow in uh, in about two months. They're Jeez. saying they're expecting snow. Um, when you see that, like Ireland hasn't got like Paddy's weekend, St Patrick's weekend, they didn't get snow in two hundred years. Yeah. On, on Paddy's weekend, and the the on the news or whatever the weather, they literally said it was going to snow at half nine on the dot. And I go, hang on, how can they predict what time it's going to bleed in snow? <laughs> Walked into the pub on the on the 
on the on the Saturday night Paddy's weekend playing music. Walked in, it wasn't snowing. One of the band members rang the other guy because his equipment was in the car. He was playing the gig the following night. He goes, "I'm taking me time. The car is covered. It was covered in snow within a matter of twenty minutes." Jeez. The minute it hit half nine, the whole of Ireland, the whole of County Kildare was covered in snow. The whole of County Kildare and Dublin and bits of Waterford and Wicklow were all covered in the base of an hour. In the base of an hour. One day, the whole of Kildare was covered. Kildare was covered in snow. The Jeez. whole of County Kildare. And, they actually and say, Dublin. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's going to snow Paddy's day. Bits of water on going bollocks. Do you know? Jeez. No one actually went to the bookies to, make, to put money on this. Do you know? Jeez. Yeah, I'm starting to wonder. It actually snowed at half nine on the dot. No, and some things are wondering. the time and date. <laughs> it's going to snow at half nine on Paddy's day at half nine. And it snowed exactly half nine on the dot. Jeez. No, I wonder that if actually, you... that actually That would actually make you think about torch. Do you know? Yeah. Now, some days I wonder if the pole shift that everyone's talking about might actually be happening too, right? Yeah. I'm actually... I, I, I thought about that myself, because you look at... Uh, i got videos sent to me about uh, certain ice, the certain islands within ice actually breaking away and, go, um, and float across the sea, across the earth. Yeah. And when they get to a certain point, they're not melting. They're, they're literally sitting there and they're melting and islands are appearing out of nowhere. Yeah. Do you know? No, maybe we will so, see High Brazil one day again too. <laughs> hopefully we do because they reckon it's every it's every seven years. So the, la the, the, last, time, the last time it appeared was, what, uh, not very good at dates. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I, I usually let other people figure those out. <laughs> 2009 or something. And I'm supposed to appear this year, but we missed the fog. But yeah, I didn't hear anything too. about it, an island appearing off the coast of Ireland and I missed the fog this year. <laughs> no, maybe Did they're I? actually advanced enough that they have some sort of cloaking technology on that island too. I don't know if they could be oh, that right. advanced. Huh. All right, so what I did is I, I took a little screenshot from your Facebook page. Is this the, the best way for everyone to get a hold of you? I guess you, you have to send Peter a voice chat instead of text-based stuff too, right? Yeah, you have to because I like a lot. Of, like, I, like I'm dyslexic, I read backwards. Yeah. And it, it, like when I use, I, when, I'm, when I'm on a lot of the feeds, and I'm proud of this, I use speaking text. Yeah, and it works well. Speaking text. It doesn't understand you, and it's oh. kind of thing like your vo your voice is the most important thing. Yeah, like God, like Jesus couldn't read and write. Like, like we're like, like when you actually see it, could Jesus like we don't know if Jesus could read and write or not. No, you know. So like, like I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud to be an actor, typecast actor. Yeah, and like when you brought up that, like someone asked me on. On Messenger there a couple of a couple of weeks ago. Sure. He goes, how do you do your lines? Oh, I go, yeah. but in a message, how do you do your lines in the speaking text? I go, oh, hang on, that's like they're asking me, okay, right? And I gave them the answer. It's they put a little piece in your ear here. They cover it up with uh, what makes it look like an ear and brings it. They bring it down. It's a it's a little Bluetooth headpiece. Oh, cool. And the speaker lines to you. you oh, know? nice. Like, actors get frustrated when they're actually going around. I, I get, I get well, me, when you actually remember lines, you, you, you can't remember. You're, you're going to twist them. Yeah. You're going, whatever your mind sees, you know? And exactly. It's like, when you can't, like, a lot of actors get, like, get twisted up in the words. A lot of actors are dyslexic, and that's why, you, like, they have the headpieces in the rear, and they have an assistant shouting the, saying the words, and that's why a lot of the time uh, you, you, you you see them looking to the side, ah, and then the, 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 their lines come out. Yeah. Do you know? Because exactly. 
it, it's, you know, like Tom Cruise is dyslexic. Oh, he wants to believe in Scientology. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I used to uh, like a lot of Tom Cruise movies. <laughs> He's not so yeah, popular anymore. I still, but... I, still, I, I, I still watch them, you know? Yeah. And they're all, they're, cool. all going, they're all going into the alien conspiracies now. And, <sighs> yeah. Now, I was going to ask you that, too. Does uh, the cast of Vikings have any cool interest in these subjects, too? Or is it ma mainly you? Yes. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot. Of the, there's a lot of the background cast and a lot of the main cast. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, you have very in, interesting stories. When you actually sit around listening to the stories, like all the people around Ireland... When you listen, I have a few friends that live up in the mountains, nice. and they'll tell you story. They'll tell me stories I never even heard of about the legends of the leprechauns and the legends of the Yeppelin, and it's kind, it's weird. Like even, like even people from Scotland, and there's people from South Africa who are in the TV series The Vikings now at this particular time, and they'll tell you the same stories. No kidding. You know, and it opens your eyes. You know. Wow, that's you know, incredible. You can actually open your eyes. And it's like, you know, I mean, someone comes up and tells you, we love you. And they go, okay, you know. <laughs> that makes me think. They're asking me my story. And then they'll tell me the same story. And they'll go, this is what we heard through our time. And it's amazing how your story is the exact same as ours. Yeah. Do you know? No, it's oh. weird. Like seems like all the, the mythology of the pagans around the world is pretty much the same. The only one that argues yeah. with them is the church. <laughs> yeah, that's the only, there's the only people that actually argues with the church. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, yeah. like, and it's like saying the, the G8, like, it's all the powers in the world meeting, and we don't know what goes on there. Never yeah. did for thousands of years. Never did, never did, and then well, we never will, you know. Hopefully, we do someday. Yeah. You know, so it all goes back to the same thing: religion. Yeah, you know, true. What a you know, and high Brazil, in our history, as I said, it's commonly known as Tirnanog, the land. It's one of the islands that are free. Yeah. So, and it's it was the same thing in the Viking mythology as well. Cool. You know, I mean, the Vikings came to Ireland. The the seen the Irish as as the same as them just wanted land yeah and they settled here and they lived here for for hundreds of years so like that makes me think you know yeah exactly uh, like even doing the TV series the Vikings and listening to the stories and listening to the different people talk and from different races and saying like they're even saying this resonates with them because Vikings were in Australia or in South Africa and you're going really you know it does open your eyes yeah yeah you know, I think we're, we're lucky to be eyes. in this generation yeah. because it's like we're getting the disclosure of history that other generations never got right it's we're going to be yeah, the yeah. first yeah, what do you, what do you don't know yeah you know so like and it said it, the, la, the, the last thing it said it's in the book of Enoch, and it's in the book of the Quran, it's in our books, is when God, when the people on the planet sees God for what he really is, the world will understand, the world of God, and Jesus is my son. Yeah. When the world sees this, uh, the, world will, the world will be in love and happiness. No, and I think times are changing, and maybe we're actually going to come to that point. Yeah. You know? Now the First Nations people no. here have a really cool uh, story about like saying that seven generations were going to pass before this would happen, and that's the generation that we're at now. So this oh. is there's a generation, yeah. and a lot like I'm getting a lot of friend friend requests. I can't really accept them all on Facebook because me me uh, me yeah you're mad it's full it now. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting a lot of friend requests from Australia, uh, South Africa. And they want to come out and tell their stories, and they're coming out and telling their stories. Yeah. And that opens my eyes, you know. 
So, no, that's what I'm hoping. Like, we keep telling people about the different Stonehenges around the world, and we tell them how important they are. It's going to really change history for the better if we can get the word out there. It does. Yeah. There's a need to be told even all these monoliths around the, the the planet. Like, it's like when I start first doing me, like, over the years, start doing me uh, history, like, it's what you hear in school, you're going, hang on. <laughs> it's even teenagers coming up to me and going, like, history is bullshit. Yeah, like, exactly. And they're, and, they're, and they're looking into it, and they're going, hang on. Like, the pyramids are built with quartz crystal. They were, they're going, like, there's the Baghdad battery. Yeah. And there's this, like, what, what, like, and they go, like, you can get an orange, Put two wires into it, two copper wires. Put two copper wires around another wire. Put put it in and put the put a, a light. The light will light the, a, a, a bulb will light within the power of the orange. Like well, you know, and yeah. that's all the bag that was was acid. That's all it was. Like they had lights billions of years ago, and it yeah. was free energy. Do you know, so like William Tesla wasn't a fool. No, it's you know? true. No, I think that too, like, we're getting to the age now where if we can get the technology that the ancient people were using, that's probably going to kick our generation into, like, a new golden age. Because there's a lot of stuff the ancients were doing that we should know by now, right? We should know. Yeah. Because, like, that's what William Tesla was trying to actually do. Yeah. Because, like, when you actually look at all the monoliths around the country, uh, around the world, was there a power source sending free electricity around the world? Hmm. And you're going, hang on, yeah, and it's the same. It's the same thing all the way through history. Yeah, no, I often same wonder thing. that, like those magic carpet yeah. stories we hear about from like the the Middle East. It's like what happens if those magic carpets were running on wireless electricity? Then they would have a power source to power them, right? So yeah, yeah, maybe it's possible. Tesla was just reinventing some of the stuff that already existed a long time ago. Hmm. It's true. Yeah. Because he, he 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 was he was literally he was involved. He 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 found, he seen he seen something. Like I've like I'm not ashamed to say I've seen I've said this on me on me page loads of times. I'm not ashamed to say I've seen flying saucers. Yeah, me too. No, I don't want a cup of coffee. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I'll yeah. have an hour minute. But, no, uh, I guess we should. Someone not to disturb you. They, they always do. That's within their own mind. But no, that's uh, no problem. We're getting close to the end of the interview, anyways. So. Yeah, it's um, it's like history. All history always repeats itself. Yeah, always. cycles. Yeah, and, yeah, it's the cycles, and the sooner the better the world sees and looks at uh, all history in the world. This is hang on. This is it. Do you know? Yeah. No, oh, I really appreciate you coming I, on the I, show. I, I, you know, it's true what Bob Dylan said, a quote uh, Robert Zitter, that. Sure. Times are now changing. Yeah. You know? And it's kind of thing, like, I play music, as I said in the beginning, like, I close my eyes. Yeah. Like, when I, when I play music, and it's... When you, when you learn the chords... You're thinking, like it's your mind what remembers. You don't need to see to to see the cards. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, I can you whistle know? any song that I hear, but I don't know how to read music. So it's like I yeah. guess that's the same thing. Right? Yeah. Like there's a every Thursday night there's a blind man. What what plays with us? And he came up to me and he touched me and he goes, "You can see, but uh, you close your eyes when you're playing music." And what you don't realize is you're playing the music from the God. You're playing music from the gods. And um, when he said that to me, I went, whoa. Yeah, that's deep. Do you know? Like, it's Jeez. like, and he literally looked, he literally looked around. The barman goes, there's your point. And he goes, it's three, it, that, uh, that, that's two feet up. And he moved, he got up off his chair, put down the guitar, and went to the point and went back to the seat. And he's wow. only there two weeks, and we're thinking like, "Whoa!" Like he he knows it within vibration where he's going. Yeah. Do you know? 
Yeah, like, we wild. need to arrive. We like, like it, it's starting to open my eyes. You know, it is literally starting to open my eyes. Like within Tourette's, there's a guy there with Tourette's. Okay. Who was starting to play. He he plays in a in a Celtic band as well. And when he when he feels the curse, he always said he picked up the whistle and started playing. Ah. You know, he picks up the whistle because how oh, he picks up the guitar. It's it's your mind uh, telling you to believe. And and, I, and he, when he said that to me last night, and I go, whoa, that's all I ever that's all I ever believed. Yeah. Do you guys record your music at all or no? We do. I recorded. Uh, I went live. I went live last night at half nine. All right. About ten o'clock in the pub. And uh, Facebook wouldn't let it through. Oh, okay. It was literally blocked. I went I, I went to save it on my timeline. Yeah. And it didn't go through. Now, I was going to say, if you manage to record some in the future and you want to play it on the show, you're welcome to come back anytime. I could give uh, the yeah. viewers a taste of uh, how the music sounds. Yeah. Oh, that's That'd cool. be interesting. All right, you know, cool. Because... Like what we're actually doing is, is we'll sit there, uh, like we call him the teacher, Shawnee Smolin. He's a brilliant, lo- lovely man, a brilliant friend. Yeah. And he learned how to play the banjo in the dark. And wow. he, he, in between every chord, he shout C D E F A. And it doesn't matter what chord you're going into; it's the same chord, but it, it, it it's. If he goes into C, you have to be an E. C. Every it, it, it's kind of every chord is reversed. Oh. You know, every chord is reversed. Like music, it's like when you play music. And in every, if you listen to uh, any band, they're not uh, they're not in sync. Yeah. You know, they're not in. They're not. They're they're playing the same chords, but they're not actually playing them in the same. They're not actually playing them within the same time. Okay. In the same time frame as say, if you play, say if you were playing the guitar, yeah, right, and I'm looking at you, you, I'm not going to be in the same, in the same at the same time as you. I'm going to be a little bit. I'm going to be behind you. Yeah. You're getting the same card again within five minutes. Do you know, and that's that. That's where it's reversed. Do you know. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I think I got you there. It's, it's interesting music. Like there's one, there's one song where I'd love to actually play the the, the song of uh, it's it's the song of the gods, and it's like no one's actually played it, you yeah. know. And it's written down, and it's kind of thing like it's probably it's probably one of the hardest tunes in the world. Holy, do you know? Do you know what? Like like. Like Vincent Van Gogh uh, done it within the within the painting of um, the what's his what's his name done it um, mm. the the Last Supper. Oh, you yeah. actually look there's cards within that in all of that, and I I've tried it. Man. And what a guy! You can't you can't do it. Do you know? It's called the mu. It was basically called the music of the gods. Yeah. And it's kind of thing like it's it, it, it's it's actually in that it's actually in that painting of a, oh. what Leonardo painted. Yeah, there's it's so many different layers painting. of meaning to that painting. It seems there's the M in yeah. there. There's chords. There's, there's the there's... end, and like w- we've tried it, and like even on the piano, and like your finger, like you're going, oh, your fingers get sore. Yeah. You know. Your fingers got sore. Yeah. No, I'd just like to, to, to thank you, too, before we wrap up the show for, for coming on and talking about High Brazil and uh, the Stonehenge stuff and all the Vikings because, man, Vikings is so popular right now, and I'm really keeping my fingers crossed that, like, maybe people will start hearing more about the Stonehenges around the world and we can help protect yeah. them. So you're really doing some amazing work by coming on my show, and I can't thank you enough for doing it. That you, you you're welcome. You're welcome, because when when he uh, when when I can't remember that man's name, that young that young chap contacted me. Oh, Derek, yeah. Like, when Derek, when Derek Derek was barred off Facebook, I was watching him a couple of times. Yeah. And it's kind of thing like, like we're being we're being stopped for speaking our mind, and when I went on, 
he, he goes, whoa, he started telling him the legend about High Brazil, and like that, the, it's the legend of High Brazil is not commonly known as Tyrion Oak in our history. Yeah, no, we don't really it's learn hard. much about it here, right, that's for sure. Yeah, Do you know, it's like the modern, the modern day, it's all YouTube, and it's kind of thing, like broken legends, and yeah. broken this and broken that he goes like people laugh when it when you talk to the irish where the click race that's all you hear yeah. now what i'm starting we to do these it. days is i'm starting to call the, yeah. the the roman history mythology and i'm going to start calling the irish history history right <laughs> yeah because there's no point calling yeah. some other cultures thing mythology when it's like it's not everyone has their own history right? i don't know why oh. we call some people's mythology and other people get called history but hopefully we'll get that yeah. more on a level playing field one day it's true yeah all right well thanks um, again for being on the show and uh if you're up for no coming problem, on again is this, is this linked to facebook or will i have to transfer from youtube that's another question on yeah what happened was is the show got split up into two links on facebook so what i'm going to do after is i'm going to edit it together into one video and put it onto youtube so I'll be able to get you a link that has the whole thing in one. Okay. Because right now it's got two videos. I don't, I'm not sure why it cut us off there, but we were able to get back on. So we only missed about a minute, maybe. Not even. Yeah. yeah that's why I think weird about Facebook to give you... They let certain people they let certain people go over the hour, and then they let, don't let other people go over the hour. Yeah. When you I speak think the I'm, truth, what is the truth? I Love, think, happiness, and kindness. Now, once you yeah. get into those sensitive subjects, it seems like uh, Facebook is a lot more careful and cuts people off. But if you wanted to talk about the latest pop stars on TV, you could talk all day without getting cut off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you talk about your chakra. Yeah. You talk about uh, crystals. You talk about this. Oh, uh, let's block them. Yeah. Because, like, it's like saying, like, when you look at certain people like the likes of uh, David Hopkins like he's big into crystals yeah and all he wants to build is a crystal grid oh do you know and that's all he wants to do and the likes of the Sham and Poet like they're literally coming out and saying the likes of this and uh, if you don't believe in yourself uh, nothing will come and it's the truth you yeah. know you have to believe in yourself to manifest everything you know no, that's that's all God ever wanted, is love, happiness, and kindness. No, I do no. a radio show every week on uh, CKWR 98.5 FM. That's one of the things I repeat almost every episode is never underestimate the power of belief. Belief is a lot yeah, powerful never, than people yeah. realize. It's how yeah. all of Jesus' miracles worked, because when he was in his hometown, his own people didn't believe him as much, so his miracles didn't work as good. But when he traveled to a faraway land, all of a sudden his miracles yeah. worked a lot better because people are able to believe uh, someone from a far off place than believing in someone that they already knew. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. You know? So. All right. Well, I guess thanks again for being on the show and I should let I you go. It was, an honor, it was an honor, my friend. And well, I, hope, I hope we meet in person soon because uh, we, like... There's a plan for every. There's a plan for everything. Yeah. No, that'd be and cool. That's what yeah. I, believe. I, I always did because are there you, is a plan. Are you going to be staying everything. in Ireland, or are you traveling around the world soon? Or? I hope to travel around the world. Oh, nice. Because the Irish government are literally trying to stop me from leaving my country now. Oh. I won't get into the detail or whatever, but I put a couple of blogs up there. Yeah. On my Facebook page, just because I march for cannabis. Oh. They're trying yeah. to. You know, they're trying to stop this now. Uh, oh, this, 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 that, and the other. And, you know, you no, broke lucky. the law. I broke no law because, it, you know, because they planted drugs on me. You know? uh, Canada's gone through <laughs> so, a lot of different things like that, too. But we got our legalization stuff coming up in July. So keeping yeah, my fingers yeah. crossed, it won't be as bad here soon. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. You know, like I have friends, like I, I smoke cannabis for the natural, the, the herb weed you yeah. know like i've tried tablets i've tried them and mother of god i i I'd still have the pain yeah and if i don't have the, if, I, if i can't if i don't have the weed i'd rather do i'd rather do without it uh and it's kind of thing and have the pain like it, when you when you don't when you have the pain 
you're in you're in constant stress. Yeah. You know, like yeah, I'm not going true. to take tablets. Well, I don't. Well, I don't know what's second in them. Do you know well, what I mean? Yeah, I used to take ibuprofen for my back all the time, but it completely destroyed my stomach lining, so I can't take yeah. them anymore either. Yeah. Do you know, like it's like it's like uh, it's like codeine, chloride, and all of that, and that's in the water. Yeah. Do you know, it's every it's in like, it makes you think. Do you know? Yeah. Does it makes you think? We won't like it's kind of thing. We, we won't get into that topics because, you know, yeah, pharmaceutical companies. Yeah, well, we could do a whole show oh, just on that, I nice guess. Talk. All right, well, thanks again for coming on the show, and I'll just say uh, thanks to Derek for putting us in touch with each other, too, <laughs> Casey's That's watching. No cool, so I'll give, you, I, I, I'll, I, I'll, I'll give you a shout when I finish editing the video and get you that link so that you're able to share it. No problem at all, and I'll say Gurumi Mahago. Okay, happy Easter, and nice to meet you. No problem. Gurumi Mahago is my friend. In Irish. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. That well, my be, family's yeah. part Welsh, so I know a little bit of that, but no, I guess it's yeah. not the same as Irish, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, take Thank care and much. nice to meet you. I will indeed. Okay. Peace. See you later. Peace. Love and light. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Okay. Wow. So we just had uh, Peter on the show and. Yeah, sorry everyone about the video cutting off and splitting it into two like that. I'm going to contact the, the software people and see what happened there. Maybe it was just something with YouTube or, or uh, Facebook. So, yeah, I'll definitely look into that and see what I can find. Yeah, and I hope everyone can share this video because getting to talk to someone uh, who's been on the show of Vikings and has a lot of knowledge about the, the Irish history and stuff was really priceless. So... I'm still kind of in disbelief that I was even able to get him on the show. It's like a, a miracle come true. So, yeah, I guess if anyone can help share that, really appreciate it. I'll just get the, the show music here closing for the end. Yeah, and sorry, I couldn't get to the chat, everyone. It's like uh, once the video got split like that, I would have to relink everything on the fly. So, um... I'll go into the, the comments section after the video's done and try to answer everyone's questions. And I could forward some to Peter, I guess, too, if, if anyone had some questions they wanted to ask him. So, um, yeah, I appreciate everyone for watching, helping share the show. And, uh, yeah, I guess happy Easter. I'm going to try getting an Easter show done, but I'm not sure if it's going to happen before Easter. I was going to do it right on Easter, but it's on April Fool's Day this year, so... It's probably not the greatest time to be doing a show because no one's going to take it serious, right? <clears throat> Alright, well, thanks everyone for watching and uh, take care. Have a good night. The Magi Show was brought to you by The Milky Way. I f hate this galaxy. <laughs>